the immersion chiller and the counterflow chiller. I'm gonna discuss the pros and cons to each, what I prefer to use, and what would be best suited for your brewing system. Hey fellow hop killers, my name is Dylan with the Hop Killer Brewery where we bring you the brews, reviews, and how to's. And in this video, we're going to discuss the pros and cons between the classic immersion style chiller versus the counter flow chiller and what is best for you. To me, these are the best options when it comes to chilling your wort from boiling to pitching temps. And before I get any hate or shade throw my way down in the comments below about plate chillers and what about a plate chiller? I love plate chillers. Plate chillers are awesome. I'm bringing you guys this video based on my own personal experience on a homebrewing level I've never personally used one I have no desire to based on the countless 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 threads uh, videos and whatnot I've seen of them having clogging problems never being able to thoroughly clean them and so on if you get any value out of this video please make sure to give it a like or a thumbs up down below and without further ado let's break into the topic let's start off with the immersion chiller it's probably the gold standard for homebrewing as far as chilling your work goes it's the most basic. It requires the least amount of equipment to operate, usually copper or stainless steel. It works by placing the entire coil inside your kettle of wort that you just got done boiling, run cold water through to bring it down to a temperature that's appropriate for the yeast you are planning to use. It's what I started using. It cools the whole batch down at once. Pros of the immersion chiller. It's cheap. It's usually in that 50 to $75 range. They do have more expensive models. Pro number two, it chills the entire batch down at once. Helps you bring that batch down to an ideal temperature to add whirlpool hops for these hazy and juicy IPAs that everybody is on right now. Pro number three, it's super easy to clean and sanitize. To clean, all you have to do is usually just hose it down after your boil and hit it briefly with something like a wet towel or anything to get the gunk off. It usually comes off super easy. And to sanitize it, all you have to do is place the entire coil in the boiling wort for the last 15 minutes of the boil and you're good to go. Pro number four, you can visually see the outside for cleanliness. Counterflow chiller is enclosed and you are not able to see inside the tube. So having the satisfaction in the warm and fuzzies, as I like to call them, of visual confirmation that the chiller is clean is always nice for peace of mind. Pro number five, there are plenty of these available to buy or you can DIY it yourself like I did for my first immersion chiller. It's super affordable, it's super easy, it's a fun project to do, and you can kind of set it up to however you would like it. So let's get into the cons of the immersion chiller. Con number one, they're less effective with water usage than a counterflow chiller, and I'll break into the details here shortly. Con number two, the bigger your batch size, the longer it takes to cool the wort down. So if you use an immersion chiller for a 10 or 15 gallon batch, you're going to be chilling your wort for a really long time because unless you have a mega sized immersion chiller, it's going to be really hard to cool down 15 gallons of wort as it would be if you had a five gallon batch. So if you rock a five gallon batch size or lower, immersion chillers to me are just as effective as a counterflow chiller is. As you go up in size, I think they become less and less effective. Con number three, I could never get a tight cone of trube at the bottom of my kettle when I would be done whirlpooling because of the fact that the immersion chiller coil is inside the kettle. It doesn't allow everything to compact and create a nice tight cone so that you can collect more wort into your fermenter as you can with say a counterflow chiller for the simple reason that the chiller is external and there's no obstruction inside of the kettle. Okay, now that we've gone over the immersion chiller pros and cons, let's break into the counterflow chiller. The counterflow chiller is external. It sits outside of the kettle with a wort in and wort out section, a water in and a water out section. It's basically a tube with another smaller tube inside of it. The outer tube is where the cooling water is ran through the opposite direction. So if water is going down this way, wort's coming up this way so that it's having the most contact time possible in the footprint of the chiller to then chill from the time it comes in to the time it goes out. Pro number one for the counterflow chiller, I think it uses less water and I'll break into that why here in a second. Pro number two for the counterflow chiller, I've never had a problem with them clogging. Some people have said they clog. I hop the shit out of my hazy IPAs and I have yet to have a problem. Pro number three, it allows you to create a nice tightly packed cone of trube and protein in the bottom of your kettle, thus allowing you to maximize the wart out that you can put into your fermenter. I've actually been able to increase my wort yield at the end 
by a close to a gallon on my 10 and 15 gallon batches strictly because I could actually get a nice whirlpool cone at the bottom of my kettle and allowing me to run off more wort into my fermenter when in fact when I was using the immersion chiller it wouldn't allow me to create that tight whirlpool cone at the bottom. Uh, just like the immersion chiller, these can also be DIY'd and there's plenty available for you to pick from. I personally use an exchillerator, which has been great. Uh, the customer service is also fantastic. If you have any questions, they're very fast to respond. And not that this is sponsored in any way by them, but they have a great product and I'd highly recommend it. Let's get into the cons of the counterflow chiller. Con number one, they're more expensive. They start around 150 to $175 from what I've seen and they go up based on size and material. Now, I have seen them used without an external warp pump, though I personally have never used one without it because your kettle would have to be here, your chiller would have to be here, and then your fermenter would have to be here, and I'm just not set up for that. So I use a pump, and in my eyes, how I use it, you would have to use one also. So there's the added cost of a warp pump. Now, if you already have one, then that is no added cost to you. If you already want one, that's an excuse for you to get one, but if you didn't have either of those, it's an added expense that roughly is about $100 to $150 on top of it. So you're already $300 deep, which could be pretty steep when you can compare that to an immersion chiller, which is 50 to 75 bucks. Con number three, you physically can't see inside of where the wart is running through between batches because it's encapsulated by that other tube and the wart runs inside of the tube that's usually about a, a quarter inch to half inch ID. So no one's gonna be able to see inside that. So you just have to really rely on your CIP practice and your cleaning regimen. So if you're not one that is really thorough with your cleaning, or you really like that peace of mind and being able to visually see where your cold wart is coming into contact with any surface after the boil, that's a drawback. Personally, I use the counterflow chiller. I used the immersion chiller for about the first year of my home brewing career. And since then, I now use the counterflow chiller and I'm absolutely in love with it. I do bigger batches, usually around 11, sometimes 17 gallon batches. I remember using my immersion chiller, which is a 50 foot length in a 10 gallon batch. And it took a really, really long time. If you have fermentation control, you can run it right into the fermenter at whatever temperature it comes out at as far as the counterflow goes. And in the summertime, which for me is normally about 85 to 90, you can then run that into your you know, bucket and put it in your refrigerator or freezer and let the temperature bring it down over time. Or if you have glycol with a coil inside, you can use the glycol to then bring it down from wherever it's out at to pitching temp, which for me, even in the peak summer, usually takes about an hour. And so basically when I'm done cleaning, I can then pitch my yeast and be good to go. Another pro for the counterflow chiller is the decreased in chilling times. Now, this is up for debate depending on your batch size, what immersion chiller you have, but I've cut down on my, you know, 10 and 15 gallon batches about 45 minutes to an hour off my chilling time. And that's huge. That's so, so nice because I can just run off through the counterflow chiller and then clean up. And then if I have to wait any time for the refrigerator or the glycol to bring it down to pitching temps, I can finish my cleaning first, and then by the time I'm done cleaning, I can then pitch my yeast into the fermenter and I'm good to go. Referring back to how the efficiency with water use with the immersion chiller versus counterflow chiller, it's really up for debate. If you use a smaller batch size, I think the immersion chiller might use less water if you use a recirculating ice bath when you bring it down to say about 100 to 120 degrees Fahrenheit. At least in my experience, that 100 to 120 down to pitching temp is usually what uses the most water. And if you go any higher than that, you're going to melt the ice and bring the water up too fast. So it's really ineffective. So I found if you bring it down to that temperature and then set up your recirculating ice bath through the immersion chiller, it's really effective, especially for those five gallon batches. Well, who would I recommend what chiller to? If you're brand new, I think an immersion chiller is the way to go. It's easy. It's simple. It's easy to clean, easy to sanitize. You know it's clean and it's cheaper. So that's a given. If you are looking to up your chilling game and maybe you're upgrading your equipment or you're expanding to do bigger batches like I have, I think it's worth the investment in a counterflow chiller, especially in that 10 to 15 plus gallon size range because they're just more effective. I think they're very easy to use. I think the immersion chiller and the counterflow chiller each have their place upon your brewing style. So there you have it. You have the pros and cons to the classic immersion chiller versus counterflow chiller debate. You have what I prefer to use and you have all the tools necessary to make the decision you need for your own brewing system. 
Again, if you enjoy these style of videos, please make sure you subscribe. If you found any value out of this video, smash that like button down below. Share this with all your brewing homies. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.